What is up guys, welcome back to another video. So today we're actually gonna be talking about five cosmetic mods that you can be doing to your car when it comes down to being $300 or less. Now, let me explain that. The reason why I'm gonna be doing this video is because I get a lot of DMs saying, what should I do to my first car? Or, hey, I just got a Honda Civic. Or, I guess you can use this in general for other cars as well. I want to mod the car, but I don't want to void the warranty. I've talked about mods that don't void the warranty before uh, in some aspects of performance, but because I still get this question asked all the time, we're actually going to be sticking to cosmetic mods. Now, all of these mods are going to be new. I'm not talking about used. Yes, you can probably find some of these mods a lot cheaper if you buy them used, but if we're going to be doing some good quality mods, we're going to be doing some new ones. Now, if you guys are new to my channel, all my mods are going to be in the description if you want to get a better hands-on look on everything that's been done to the car, from performance mods all the way to cosmetic mods. You can tell it's not stock. I've actually just recently went flex fuel with the 2.5 Fairable Tune, and it is amazing. I cannot recommend that enough. But that's not what this video is about. If you want to start modding your car and you just want to stick to looks, I definitely, definitely recommend some lowering springs. Yes. Now, the reason why I recommend lowering springs is because there are so many different lowering springs out there. We have D2. We have Eibach, we have HNR, Swift. I believe Teen and Skunk 2 are available as well. And the nice thing about the Eibach lowering springs is they come with two different types. They have the Pro Kit and the Sport Lines. I have the Sport Lines. And as you can see from the rear, it's pretty dropped. It looks really good. I believe I was able to get these for about 280. I think it was closer to $300, like right at the 300 mark. Cause that was actually the first mod I did to this car when I got it almost two years ago. It was the Loring Springs. And let me tell you, the Loring Springs definitely helped out with the one, the performance, but it definitely helped out with the cosmetics. And okay, look, lowering springs, that is a little performance oriented, it's not just cosmetics, I get it. But I do want to also let you know that D2s are definitely the lowest ones out there. As a matter of fact, this guy that I follow, his name is Mikey, he has the same 2020 S Honda Civic SI Coupe, and this is how his look with the D2s on him. His is definitely lower all around, but I feel like sport lines are like perfect for the daily drop. And the thing I do like about these springs is that they definitely feel almost OEM. The 2020 Civic definitely came with a little bit stiffer suspension than the, than the previous years, but overall, it is definitely one of my favorite mods I've done so far. And it's not that expensive too. When it comes down to mechanical works, I feel like if you are mechanically inclined, you could definitely install these by yourself. You just need the right tools, a jack stand, jack, and all the other good stuff. It's really not that hard to install lowering springs and or coilovers on these cars. Definitely just need to watch a couple YouTube videos. There's a lot of them out there. That way you can see how exactly you need to do these. Now, another thing that we're gonna be talking about, uh, because I lowered the car, the car definitely needed something in the front to make it look a lot more aggressive. And that little something is the front lip. The nice thing about this as well is also under $300, definitely under $300. This is, mine is the Ultimate Motorsports GT style lip. I believe I bought this for about $210. Uh, they had a sale going on and whatnot. It is very similar to the Grady carbon fiber front lip. I didn't want to spend about 800 bucks on a carbon fiber lip yet. So I decided to get the next best thing. And so far this lip has looked really, really good. The only thing I will tell you guys is that it does sit very, very low. So it makes the car look a lot more aggressive and a little bit harder to drive in the aspect terms of the low life, but you don't have to get this lip. I also have had the Pro Civic lip, which there's a picture of it right here. And guys, let me tell you when I say a front lip helps, a front lip helps. Trust me on that. And Another awesome thing about that is that's very, very easy to install. All you gotta do is just lift the car. Sometimes you don't even have to. If your car's not that low, you should be able to do it at an incline and you'll be fine. But keep in mind that a lot of these lips, you are required to drill into the bottom of the bumper. If you're not comfortable with doing that, I understand. We do have the 3M tape that you can also use as well. Okay, yeah, real quick. 
sorry for the interruption on the video i did have to change locations because that spot was getting so loud i was trying to find a new spot that was very close to my house but apparently that's not going to happen so we were just talking about the lips front lips keep a look at the screen there are so many different options that you can get with this car for front lips from ebay to sabon to Gretti, ultimate motorsports pro civic there are there's a new one called garage 44 which i'm putting on the screen right now it has two air vents in the front lip which i really 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 want but to say exactly how much it is, I don't know. I definitely have to hit them up and get a quote on that one. So front lips, guys, very, very easy to install. Very awesome. Definitely changes the front look of the car overall. Another quick look of it right here. And I'm not going to hide this from you guys as well. I did crack mine just a little bit right here. or well, a lot of it uh, from how low the car is. But I am already looking into getting a new lip. I don't know if I want to go that low yet again, but it's a good thing I practice with this one and not the carbon fiber one. Bringing it over to the rear. Guys, do you guys notice anything different that uh, is not stock? Oh, the diffuser. I've talked about the diffuser plenty, plenty of times, and definitely this diffuser is my favorite for the SI, for the coupe, for the sedan, for the sport model, for anything, in the hatchback, like this Type R style rear diffuser definitely brings out the rear of the car by far and probably the most, if anything. Everything else on the market is a little bit too much for me. It's a little too aggressive and I feel like this is a lot better uh, and it comes to term of price and I guess you can say in looks and cosmetics. Like no offense to any other company out there that has aggressive style rear diffusers but i definitely feel like this is a lot better not too much but it is a little bit more on i guess you can say the softer and aggressive side of it at the same time um this is from abs dynamics and then to install this one guys you do have to take out the rear bumper it is not that hard to do i already have an install video of it right here and then at the same time this is the same rear diffuser well not the same one but the same type that i put on hector sedan and if you guys remember it did bring out the car a lot especially when you have an aftermarket exhaust it makes everything pop in the rear definitely one of my favorite mods that i've done cosmetic wise uh to this car Moving on to the next one, we're going to still keep it on the rear, and this one's going to be very subjective, so a lot of people are going to hate it, a lot of people are going to love it. I still get asked, where did I get this? Now, this rear arrow flap. It is from Cardi's Designs. Now, looking at it from both ends right here, it definitely brings the rear wing, it angles it up, it gives it a good aggressive look. Now, looking at it from the back again, oof. I love how the rear of the car looks. <laughs> like, it looks really, really, really good. I believe this one right here, I can't remember the exact price, but it is definitely under 300. Screen on it right here if you guys wanna check it out. Now, the nice thing about the car use designs is they have it for multiple cars, especially in the 10th gen community. They have it for the hatch, they have it for the sedan, and they have it for the SI Coupe. I personally think that it looks the best on the sedan and the hatch. Ironically, I have the coupe. I love how it looks, but one thing that I will tell you is visibility is not the best with this. From the rear, my visibility is gone. And I am already used to it, so it's not that big of a deal, so I'm, but I'm giving you the heads up right now. We talked about the lowering springs. We talked about the front lip. We talked about the rear diffuser. And we talked about the rear gurney flap. Now, what's the last thing I'm gonna talk about? The side skirts, I'm just playing, not the side skirts. Side skirts are very subjective, I feel like not a lot of people are gonna like them or not. I do like mine. Uh, but the last part that I'm gonna talk about is wheel spacers. Now, the reason why I'm gonna be talking about wheel spacers is it does two things for you. One, it does help handling because the car has a wider base stands, I guess is what you would call it. And two, it looks a lot more aggressive. But I've seen pictures, and I'm actually gonna do it to my wife's hatch. Once we get it back, she was in an accident again, but the car's fine, and we're fine. Once we get the car lowered on her hatch, I'm actually gonna be putting wheel space on it, like 15 millimeter spacers. That way, it looks a lot more aggressive lowered. Wheel spacers are definitely overlooked when it comes to cosmetics because there are a lot of people out there that love how the stock wheel looks, including myself. Honestly, wheel spacers are not that big of a deal. Wheel spacers are definitely overlooked at and I feel like they need to be looked at over again. When you look at the 10th gen community, I guarantee you there's thousands and thousands of people using wheel spacers, even in the non-10th gen community. There's so many people using 
wheel spacers and you can definitely get different wheel spacers at different prices from like i think 50 bucks a pair to about 120 dollars a pair at that point it's just whatever brand you want to represent and or support so you can't go wrong with either of them right there there's plenty of other options on the line five millimeter spacers to about 25 millimeter spacers all they are is lowered and spacers looks really good guys keep in mind there are a lot of different cosmetics that you can do for under $300, especially for under $300. These five mods that I chose were specifically because these are the ones I chose that I feel like that were def definitely needed from factory to make the car pop a lot more. Anyways, guys, front lip, lowering springs, wheel spacers, diffuser, rear gurney flap. What do you guys think? Yes. You can do a lot of other things that are for way under $300, but I wanted to start right here. Maybe we can keep this going. Maybe the next one I'll do for under 200, maybe the next one I'll do for 100, maybe the next one I'll do for 50. I don't know. So these are just cosmetic mods because there are a lot of people that just want to worry about cosmetic mods to their car. And if they want to know what do they want, and if I ever get the question, what should I do to my car cosmetically? I don't want to do anything in performance to it yet. I'm gonna show you this video right here and you get to choose whatever you want to do to your car because it is your car uh, but yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video don't worry the E85 flex fuel kit is awesome on this car I've been enjoying it since I've installed it I will be doing another video more in depth with that right there and yeah I'll see you guys in another video you guys have a good day peace